Hey friends, it's time for another video. So I'm gonna do a review of the $75 Harbor Freight jack uh, engine stand. So this is, uh, they're discontinuing this model, but I'm gonna put that engine on this stand. So this video is the unboxing and assembly of this engine. So let me, let's get started. Uh, so I think I can clamp that there and that'll give you guys a good view. These have been kind of hard to get. Um, engine stands in general have been hard to get and everything's getting expensive these days. So I was pretty happy to pick one up for 75 bucks because I'd been um, I, I'd been to Harbor Freight a couple times looking for these and they didn't have them. Yeah, overall, package is not too bad. So we have some instructions. A variety of parts. Oh, I hate that noise. All right, so uh, let me rearrange these and start to figure out how this is going to go together. So clearly one of these goes at one end and the other at another end. So that's the handle. I'm going to set these aside because this isn't going to be needed right now. All right, so I have somewhat carefully studied the instructions. And I'm gonna dump all the parts out here. No idea what that's for yet. All right, so first things first, it calls for this piece and this piece to be joined. And in particular, it goes like this. And there is a spot for a bolt down here. Must be the only bolt. Now, if you've watched very many of my videos, you know that I strongly believe in using thread locker on anything that originated in China. And honestly, it's not just China, but um, you really should use thread locker on everything if you want it to stay together. But that is especially true when we are dealing with products from China. Now, in a situation like this where it's just a lock bolt, I think the easiest thing to do is to use a crescent wrench like this. There aren't very many things I like to use those for, but that's one of them. So the next thing is, this goes on here. Looks like all these are the same, so that makes this kind of easy. Now, I'm going to reverse this a little bit 
because I don't think it really matters. This is not the, let's see what they want here. And again, I just strongly encourage you to liberally apply thread locker to anything you do with products from China. It will prevent your aggravation when this stuff otherwise will start to come apart. So let me see what kind of socket sizes I'm working with today. So these are 17 millimeter. Which is fortunately quite an easy size to locate in my shop because I have plenty of it. And before we get too carried away, let's put the other bolts in. I just want to make sure you guys can see. So, and in this case, I have it upside down because they didn't do it the way I would have done it. So, I'm going to turn this one over. Now, it's not necessary to take these completely out because it's just not. And if you do what I just did, remember to reapply thread lock because you just want to make sure you have plenty of it on there. So in both of those cases, that's that's plenty. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheels on. And, and again, there's there's a method of my madness. I'm kind of doing this backwards, but I, I want the weight over here so that it will sit. Now, what did we just lose? Why do we have an extra washer in that bag? Mm. No telling. I love surprise. Oh, it's supposed to be under there. All right, so let's see. Not 17. Now 
Now, I don't know if that's going to go real well. So we'll find out. These are 19 millimeters. And it thinks all of this goes in here. And remember my rule. If it's from China, it gets thread lock. This will be a particularly challenging one to install because um, this is really something where they should have sleeved it and put the bolt on top. But that would have added cost and complexity and the requirement for accuracy to what they're doing. So now, yeah, that ain't gonna fit in there. All right, 19 millimeter. Oh, hey, what do you know? First one I found. And let's see if that's 17 back here. All right, so the base of this is 17 millimeters. And this is pretty much the only way you're gonna get in here. Now, you don't need a ton of uh, torque and pressure on this. It just needs to be in here. Oh, so that was a bonus washer. Really don't know why they've even included a washer because you've got a You're, you're bolting against a uh, square tube steel, so it shouldn't be necessary. I'm sure there are a large number of cuss words said about this configuration by people who are assembling it. And remember, you do not have to get this to be super tight. That'll be just fine. But you are going to want to balance this somewhere like that. Well, and you know what? That's going to be difficult to reach, so we're going to turn it. And that's why I assembled all of this the way I did. I, I wanted to be able to have it stay still while I worked on it.
Okay, so again, we're going to put thread lock on both of these and then we'll just assemble this. We've got a couple wheels to install and um, these are using sleeve bearings which isn't the best but you know they're they're centered or cast wheels anyway so I don't have super high expectations on them It is nice that they assemble the uh, hardware together so that you, it does, uh, does make it a little bit easier. I'm putting the bolt head to the outside. And when you put these together, it is not necessary to, to cinch them down. You actually don't want to cinch them down. And I think these are either 14 or 13. These are 14 millimeter bolts. having a good day where it's not hard to find anything. So as you tighten this, it's going to draw this together and you don't want it to draw together too much or it will become difficult. Uh, it could actually damage the sleeve. And if you damage the sleeve, it will um, expand it and then it won't spin. I don't think I need that anymore. All right, so. Now at this point, we get to turn it over. So, you know, there have been some questions about how well this thing rolls. And it seems to roll pretty good, but I think it needs a weight test. Not recommended as a go-kart. Um, no, seriously, it does, it does roll just fine. Um, so next we'll come back to this piece and it's gonna fit in through here. And there's a pin for this. 
All right, so I, I have a little crimping mechanism that I bought specifically for stuff like this uh, so that I could put a leash on it. I uh, don't know exactly where it's at at the moment. I actually think it's underneath something where I can't reach it. Um, yeah, let me give it one more shot, see if I can find it. I, I unfortunately I have no idea where it's at. So we're going to just have to get along without it. So then we come to these bolts. These bolts do not get locked tight because if you, you need to be able to adjust these for your individual engine. So what you want to do is just put these on and make them thumb tight. Now, there is one other thing that I think is really important to do when you're assembling this, and I haven't done it yet, so I'm gonna stop and do it here in just a second. Once you get a 500 pound engine on here, which is what's going on here in my case, you're going to have hell turning this over. So, the disposable pin that will quickly be lost by most people the plastic keeper. What you need to do is take this off and paint it. So I'm gonna paint the inside. The paint that I prefer is Super Lube, which is a um, synthetic multi-purpose grease, and this is a perfect application of Super Lube. I keep it on a brush, a chip brush that's never seen chips. And I'm just going to liberally apply Super Lube to this. Now, if you're not familiar with Super Lube, I'll put the link in the video. You can get it on Amazon. Where did it come from? There we go. And that's going to make it much easier to spin this around. Remember, it goes in one side. And, you know... But that's gonna make that much easier to turn when it has a whole bunch of weight on it. Now, in the short term, I need a paper towel to get rid of all that grease. Oh, there they are. Now, what I'm about to do, you probably shouldn't do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. It's my garage. If you don't like it, don't do it in your garage. I'm going to throw that in the trash. I realize that in some places that could be a fire hazard. That's not gonna spend enough time in there for it to catch on fire. Thank you for watching. So that's it. Yeah, that's gonna make that much easier to spin. Um, and uh, at any rate, that is the assembly of this. And then it's really important that you keep the instructions and if you got your free washer, your free washer, they go in the recycle bin file. Pop. And where most Harbor Freight instructions go to live out their days, the recycling bin, where it'll get made into toilet paper, which up until a year ago was a inexpensive commodity, but now it's worth quite a bit. So I'd call that upcycling. Um, so at any rate, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and click the little bell so you find out when I release new videos. Uh, check out my playlist. That's how I organize the videos into different things that I'm interested in so it doesn't just seem like a random stream of consciousness that really is my life. Um, but anyway, 
again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope this makes uh, it easier for someone who buys one of these to put it together and uh, not struggle with it that much. That looks like it is something that is very, very easy to lose. And then the other rubber handle goes on and I guess that's supposed to stop that from falling off. I don't, I don't trust that. So, hmm, let me stop for a second.